Good morning, everybody. Uh, again, my name is George Castillo. I'm here representing the FAA. And uh, thanks to YASA for inviting us and allowing us to share some information with you. Hopefully, uh, you'll find the information uh, useful. And uh, my focus is going to be on, on innovation. Uh, in uh, aircraft certification within the FAA, our uh, responsibility is the uh, regulations for all the products that are certified, ranging from airplanes to uh, rotorcraft to engines. And in the last uh, two years, we've been undergoing a transformation. We refer to it as air transformation. And it was a recognition that the, uh, the industry uh, is changing in front of us. There's a lot of innovation that's coming our way. Uh, business models are changing. It's a global industry. And uh, we recognize that the organization that we had in place uh, had uh, served us very well up to that point. But we needed to uh, take a real close look at the things that we're doing and, and see how we need to uh, reorganize and also transform the uh, way we do business. And we had uh, identified eight vision elements that were going to guide us on this transformation. Uh, one of those vision elements is foster innovation. Uh, purpose of that vision element is to uh, figure out what we need to do so we can embrace innovation and not shy away from it. And uh, we've partnered with industry uh, and uh, used a lot of input from industry and have collected a lot of information. And I'm here to brief you on one of those uh, uh, concepts that we have started implementing. And uh, it's referred to as a Center for Emerging Concepts and Innovation. The whole purpose of this um, uh, center is to create a single entry point and to uh, request uh, and, and incentivize that applicant stakeholders that are proposing to get innovations introduced into their existing products or bring new innovative aircraft to come talk to us before you even make application. Uh, by the time you make application, uh, by that time, you've already made contractual obligations. You've got delivery commitments. And it's kind of late for us to be engaging in the discussion to find out what the gaps are to get your product certified. So early engagement is a way for us to start that conversation with you. And what you can expect when you come and talk to uh, the Center for, for uh, Emerging Concepts and Innovation is that we will start staffing uh, resources to support your, your products. Uh, we will provide visibility to, to FAA management so we can uh, uh, measure our progress uh, and start identifying uh, key technologies that we need to, uh, to uh, start addressing with policy and regulations. The information that we collect when we start these discussions with you uh, will help us also define requirements for our research and development portfolio. Uh, policy needs for the future are identified so we can get ahead of the uh, need for a policy. We also do outreach such as these forums and other forums to see what kind of trends, what kind of uh, products are coming down our way so we can uh, be prepared when you come and make application or engage with us. This uh, concept for, uh, in, um, for innovation, uh, we've already got quite a few and a lot more innovations than on what, what I've highlighted here. And everything ranging from uh, new technologies to new production uh, concepts. Uh, could be business models, could be partnerships. Uh, anything that we're not used to seeing, this Center for Concepts and Innovation is chartered with addressing those gaps. We already have a multitude of entities, stakeholders, and companies that we are engaging in conversations. Um, we have a, uh, last time I lost count, we have something like 40 to 50, even more, companies that have approached us that are proposing to get new products certified. Uh, those are new companies with new products, and that doesn't cover the existing uh, companies, the established companies that have products already in place that are also looking to, uh, to, to uh, add innovations to their products. Now, as we engage in these discussions with you, and the whole key of the discussions is to identify the gaps, the gaps in the regulations to get your product approved, the gaps in the policies to get your products approved. As we develop those regulations and the, product and the uh, policies, 
we will be applying our safety continuum. And we've shown this chart for, uh, for several years, but it's a recognition that we will have uh, different solutions depending on the product that uh, we are being presented with. And it's a recognition that the, uh, the expectation for, for safety uh, varies. It's a scalability scale here. Uh, uh, the uh, flying public expects the highest level of safety for something like the 121 operator, commercial operations. But we also have to recognize that uh, for general aviation at the lower scale, um, uh, there's costs associated with, with, the, uh, with, with some of the uh, innovations and the uh, safety requirements that we uh, are considering to, to, uh, to uh, recognize. So in here, uh, just give you an appreciation for the, the, the landscape that we see. Um, we, we still have everything from tr traditional airplanes, 23, 25, traditional rotorcraft, the uh, normal category of transport, uh, engines, but in the middle, we have a whole mixture of, of everything else. And that is the, uh, the challenge that we're facing, is how do we take these products that are bringing elements of, of airplane, rotorcraft, that are bringing uh, uh, new innovations into the uh, propulsion system, to electric propulsion, and, and establish the uh, necessary regulations and policies to get those products certified. And the way we're doing that is obviously applying the safety continuum that I talked about earlier, but also we have 2117, which is a regulation uh, under FAR Part 21 uh, that allows us to establish the uh, certification standards uh, for your product. With 2117, uh, we have two paths that are available for, for the FAA. Uh, one path is to use the standards that have already been established for your product, airplane, rotorcraft engines, and then 2117B, which is the, uh, the second path. If we have no standards for your product, we have a regulatory pathway to develop the appropriate standards for those products. So um, within the FAA, uh, we are, are doing a lot of collaboration with, between the different branches that are responsible for these different products. Within Aircraft Sir, we have a branch that handles rotorcraft. Uh, that is my branch. We have one with small airplanes and one with transport airplanes and engines and propellers. Uh, these products that are employing different technologies and different concepts from the different products um, are being coordinated and the surfaces are being developed with uh, collaboration between these branches. Um, the, the performance based regulation is a concept that we are very, um, very uh, passionate about within the FAA. And, and recognizing that uh, for FAR Part 23, we've already established performance-based regulations. Uh, the FAA is capitalizing on the uh, Part 23 performance-based regulations for a lot of these innovations, especially the uh, EV tow market. Uh, so that serves as an excellent baseline uh, starting point to establish the regulations for a lot of these EV tow aircraft. Uh, but at the same time, we have uh, part one definitions that define uh, what an airplane is, what a rotorcraft is, what a gyroplane is, uh, et cetera. And some of these EVTOL uh, aircraft are, are still rotorcraft as defined by part one. So we've also uh, has started drafting a policy uh, to cover these special class rotorcraft. And, uh, uh, the, the allowance for that policy is under 2117, which I mentioned earlier. I mentioned the path of uh, 2117A. Basically says, uh, your product, if, you, if we've already prescribed standards for your product, you use those standards. Uh, for rotorcraft, um, part 27 applies to normal category rotorcraft, so you come to us, that is your path for certification. For small airplane, part 23, that is your path to certification. If we have no standards for your product, as defined by part one, we, we uh, apply uh, 2117B, which basically uh, um, uh, requires us to look at the standards that we have in place from any standards that have been developed, identify the appropriate standards that apply to that special class product, and then any gaps, uh, we need to develop the appropriate standards for those gaps. For the multi-rotor uh, rotorcraft that employ EV to uh, electric propulsion, the, the, the problem there is that those are rotorcraft. And part 27.1 is a standard that applies to rotorcraft. So 
when we started uh, working on some of these uh, multi-copter rotorcraft and applying 27, it became very clear to us that it would require extensive modifications of Part 27 to make that regulation fit uh, these multi-copter EV tow rotorcraft. Uh, about 60% of the regulations will need to be revamped, modified. So we have started uh, developing a draft policy that we will be putting out for public comment soon uh, to cover uh, these type of aircraft. Um, and IASA earlier identified the, uh, the definition for VTOL. Uh, the special class rotorcraft uh, aligns uh, uh, fairly well with that definition. Uh, so this policy, uh, when it comes out for comments, we, we request that you comment on it. Uh, what I want to make sure is you understand the purpose for the policy. Without this policy, we will be required to apply Part 27 to your products if you fall under this uh, type of product. And, and by applying Part 27, the only way we can do modifications on an actual project is the issuance of exemptions or special conditions for every word, every statement that is changed from the existing Part 27. Uh, that is a very uh, formal uh, process, requires a lot of public commenting, uh, and it doesn't quite serve us as well as allowing us to use 2117B process, which will achieve the same end result, yet a lot more efficient. So uh, for, for your product to fall under this policy, uh, you would have to have quite a bit of innovation for your product. And while I identify what that would entail, electric propulsion, uh, fly-by-wire technology, um, uh, uh, aircraft is not able to auto-rotate like traditional rotorcraft, um, et cetera. And, and as I mentioned, this policy is basically not changing what you are. You are a rotorcraft uh, that employs multi-rotors, uh, more than two. Uh, but the way we will work with you to establish your serve basis is under 2117B process. That process allows us to work with you as an applicant, uh, negotiate a serve basis for your product, and once we achieve that goal, we uh, notify the general public of the outcome of that CERB basis. Um, and then we publish the final CERB basis. Uh, so it's a lot less formal, a lot more efficient than if we take the 2117A path, which will require the issuance of special conditions. Uh, so the benefits of allowing us to uh, employ 2117B uh, process, I mentioned earlier about 60% of the regulations for Part 27 would need to be modified. That's a lot of special conditions. Uh, just to give you a feel for a special condition process, to, uh, to uh, issue one special condition within the FAA process, we would have to uh, public, publish a uh, notice of intent uh, to, to issue that special condition, solicit comments from the public, uh, 30 to 45 days, receive comments, review disposition, if we do substantial changes to the uh, proposed special condition, we have to reissue another public notice and go through that comment process again. Uh, if we make changes, we consider them not to be substantial, then we issue the final special condition. And that's per special condition, so that will give you an idea. We have to modify 60% of a uh, Part 27 reg. Uh, that is just not a, uh, a, a viable path. Um, the, the, other, uh, the other benefit is that if we were doing special conditions, the only thing that we share with the general public is the modifications to Part 27. Uh, so, so you would never see the complete special condition because a complete serve basis is something that's negotiated with applicants. By doing 2117B, we're able to come up with a complete serve basis and share that with the, uh, with the public but not uh, impose risk on the certification program like the special condition process would do. So a lot of benefits to the 2117B process. I hope uh, when you see this uh, uh, policy for your comments uh, that you give us uh, your, your, your take, feedback on it, because we want to make sure that this policy works not just for us, but for you. Okay, thank you.